So you say you want to cut some thin strips. We got you covered. Let's take a closer look. Now in this view, what you would want to do is you would have your first test cut, let's say, done. You have a little mark in there saying, oh, that's perfect. That's the quarter inch that I need. Those are the strips I want. All right, so we're going to start there, pretending that I've done my first test cut. You're then going to find a piece of wood that's going to work for you that you're going to be able to lock down. This is just two bolts that the head of the bolt underneath has two washers stacked up and welded to the top of the bolt. That's all it is. I welded right around the inside of the washer hole and I ground it flat and that's what we have. So you're going to then bring a piece of your scrap wood up against or you can tape this down, but it's so tough to adjust if you're taping. You're going to bring it to this perfectly to this edge with your fence not moved. It's still exactly where you had it. You're going to bring this up right snug up against it and tighten these down. When you're done doing that, you're going to find this is too tight now and you can't move it. That's okay. Loosen up your fence. Move it away. Bring it back just till it fits perfectly. No drag just lightly. You want to make sure that there's no real bad friction in there at all where all of a sudden it's going to shoot forward and be dangerous for you. Just the lightest amount of tension is fine. Once you got that handled, these are tight. You're ready to do your first test. Grab your push sticks or whatever you're ready to use. And when you get started, if you don't have a riving knife, this could be kind of a pain for you because it's going to want to chatter on the back of that saw blade. So that's why I have my pins in. Riving knife would be so much nicer. But you're going to get started, and sometimes that thing will be chattering on the back edge of there. Hold your ground. Don't stop or don't freak out and let go or anything. That's when accidents happen. Hold your ground. Let it wear out the part a little bit so it stops chattering on it, whatever it takes. Stay moving at a slow speed. And once I get to my riving knife, generally I'm done with any problem ever again. And away I go. But that's just the issue you have to play with when you're dealing with really thin strips. And I'm doing strips down to 30 thousandths, and it's, I do them all the time. It does work, and it works darn well. But sometimes you won't get the whole length of the strip. Sometimes that chatter might cause the first inch, two, three inches of it maybe, to just destroy itself before you get to the riving pin to get the load off of it so it stops the chatter. Vacuum and heat is causing the warp inward to create the problem. So you guys with riving knives are just lucky. This saw is so old they didn't even know what a riving knife was. And what they had back in the day are they had some little ratchet paws on springs, a whole bunch of them in width. I don't know, two, three, whatever it was, I don't remember. But you can't cut these little strips. If you have that system on the back of your saw, don't be doing this. That's why that system got tossed in the garbage, is because I cut a lot of small, thin pieces for making up extrusions, plastic extrusions. And you need these tiny, thin pieces and lots of them. So I'm constantly making these micro pieces. I mean, I'm lucky if I'm cutting pieces that are a sixteenth wide sometimes. So it's so important to have something back here. I just wish I could add that riving knife. I just don't have it. But bottom line, you guys, be safe. Have your pins installed. Don't ever freak out and let go when it starts chattering. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Always have your safety equipment on and be prepared for the worst, but hold your ground. Get your pass through, get onto the back of the riving knife, and you'll have no problem. Next time you move over, do the same thing, though. You're going to want to have this fence so accurate each time that it's never tight. It's got to have room so things move in here freely and yet not have left to right slop in here. And you'll have accuracy that always, always, if your fence is tight, always is under five thousandths of an inch. And I mean that. I can do two to three pretty readily also. But sometimes to hold that two thousandths I'm going to need my longer fence and a clamp on the other end. But if you do a really good job in how you set this up here, you'll find you can really tighten up your accuracy. You guys let me know what you think. Take care.